Hey guys, it's Alex Burtson, the Manic Scholar, back again with another video. Uh, this week, I'm going to focus on Ramana Maharshi through different spiritual systems. Uh, I'm going to do his Michael teachings today, and then later this week, I will do his Vedic astrology and his human design. But if you don't know who Ramana Maharshi is, uh, he was a, a sage guru um, in India. He lived around the mountain Arunachala. Um, but he had an experience when he was really young, I think he was like 14, where he was just overcome with this surge of energy, um, this force that, that came through him. And uh, he was paralyzed for a while, for a few weeks, I think. And somebody had to take care of him. But he basically had this awakening experience uh, where the the flow of universal energy came through him, and he surrendered to the greater flow of things. Um, uh, so he was a really big teacher. Uh, he teaches basically the non-duality philosophy. Uh, he teaches about self inquiry as a way to uh, way towards self realization. But he basically teaches that, you know, the, the self is everywhere, is everything, and it's eternal and unchanging. And the the mind and the body just uh, function automatically. And uh, he talks about non-doership, that all actions just spontaneously arise out of us. It, and it's coming from the universal self. It's like this current of energy that just comes through us and leads us to do everything that we do in our lives. So it's pretty cool stuff uh, that he teaches. Uh, Advaita Vedanta, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, Non-duality. So yeah, he was a really big teacher. Also, Gangaji was part of his lineage, you could say. She was taught by Papaji. Uh, and Papaji was Ramana Maharshi's uh, student at one point. Um, so yeah, anyway, we'll just get into his Michael chart. If you don't know what Michael teachings is, what a Michael chart is, it, uh, Michael teachings is a channel body of knowledge that talks about soul types called roles that society has. Each, each soul has a different role and there's seven of them. It also talks about our soul age, where we are in our reincarnation cycle and the different lessons we're learning at the time and different things like global job, community responsibility, your goal, attitude, mode for this life, among a bunch of over, other overleaves. So I'll just get into his chart here now. Um, the first thing I'll look at is his essence, which is the stuff on the left here. Essence is the characteristics of, of your soul that stays the same for your whole reincarnation cycle. And then overleaves on the right, this is the characteristics for this life only. So I'll just focus on essence first. So he his role is scholar, which is the neutral role. It's the one that provides support for all the other roles and understands the other roles better than any other role does because they have this neutral approach. Um, so they can see many different sides, different, different approaches to things. But they're all focused on seeking knowledge and basically organizing information for the world to be a resource that people can use. And scholars want to have hands-on experience with certain things that they're, they are interested in studying. So they'll, they'll go really deep into things to really experiment with things to get hands-on experience in different areas. Uh, but they're very focused on studying, uh, assimilating experiences, um, and they're the neutral role. So they're they're right in the middle in terms of cardinal and ordinal. Uh, so they can have some lives where they're, they're more ordinal, where they're just more focused on one-on-one -on -one connections, and other lives where they're more cardinal, where they can um, address big groups. So there's always flexibility with being a scholar. Also, you might not ne necessarily notice the, the scholar characteristics in somebody who's primarily scholar but has other uh, traits other roles in their in their casting so in Ramana's case 
he's uh he's got the cadence position priest. Um, so that brings some of the the spiritual focus focus on the higher good. Um, focus on the spiritual aspects of life, the emotional inner world aspects, but wants to see people grow spiritually and in any every way. Uh, it's an inspiration type. Um, so that's kind of a secondary. Uh, if people don't notice the scholar, they're going to notice the priest in him. Um, but he has some extra scholar as his cadence. So he's, he's extra scholarly. You know, he's got uh, a lot of scholar going on. Um, he doesn't have an essence twin, which is pretty rare. Um, most people have an essence twin. The vast majority do with maybe, I don't know if it's one in a thousand don't or something, but it's really small. Um, I think Obama doesn't have one either. But I have to go check that. Um, but yeah, so Rama doesn't have an essence twin, so you won't have any essence twin bleed through of any other role. So he's basically scholar all the way with some priest going on too. So that's that's the main parts of his essence there. His task companion is an artisan, so this is a soul on the other side who helps him with his tasks. And it, since it's an artisan, it helps with creativity a lot, uh, originality, uh, creating new things. So that could be a theme for him. He's in Cadre Entity, Cadre 8, Entity 4. Uh, I'm actually not sure who else is in that entity, but this entity is the fourth of seven. So it's the most scholar-like entity out of all the entities in the Cadre. So if you guys don't know what an entity is, it's a, it's a group of a thousand souls. And a Cadre is a group of seven entities together. So the cadre is a bigger group and entity is a smaller group. But basically, any soul that's in your entity, like if you looked at your chart and it was 8-4, then you would be in the same entity as Ramana Maharshi. Um, so the, he would be like a soul brother to you, like part of your, uh, your group that you came to incarnate on this planet with. So everybody has a cadre and entity, and it's different ones for everybody. But I noticed for me, like people in my life, especially my family and close friends, they're all the same cadre as me, which is pretty interesting. Um, but I've met people of several different cadres. I have friends of different cadres. Um, but yeah, it's just an interesting aspect of the teaching. His orientation is love, which is focused on the emotional aspect of things, as opposed to more the intellectual or the more physical kinetic energy, action axis kind of stuff, which would be called beauty or energy. So he's focused on love. That's the highest uh, manifestation of emotion, is love. So throughout all his incarnations, he's going to have that kind of bent towards love. Uh, his male-female energy, he's right in the middle. Uh, he's 49 male, 51 female. That's as close to the middle as you can get. There's nobody who, who does 50-50 because you'd just be split in terms of not knowing which way to go. You kind of le need to lean one way or the other. Um, so he's balanced between doing and being. Creative energy and focused energy towards action. Um, he's got both going on. His frequency is 46. So... Uh, He's right in the middle. His energy is more fluid. It's not super solid and ground, like super grounded or um, light and airy. He's in the middle, more fluid. So he doesn't rush through experiences really fast. He takes his time a little bit more, but he's not a super low frequency either. So he's right in the middle. 50 is average, so he's pretty close to the middle. Previous cycles is 10, and... What previous cycles is, is how many times you completed the whole reincarnational cycle on one planet uh, as a certain rule. So he's been on 10 different planets before he came to Earth to do his reincarnational cycle here. And he's probably been, he could have been all the roles so far in each one of those cycles. He could have been a different role at this point uh, because he's done it 10 times. He probably has tried all of them. Um it's a pretty common amount of cycles I see, uh, previous cycles that I see from the charts that I've seen. Um, but the average on the planet is four. And Jesus had 19. So 
and Jesus was the most of anybody we know who incarnated on Earth. Um, so it's interesting to see. Um, but what this means is, you know, for each cycle, you have like a hundred to two hundred lives on average. Um, so if you're going to add up how many lives you probably had throughout all the cycles, you probably had a thousand to two thousand lives. So, you know, he's had a lot of experience under his belt as a sentient soul at this point. Um, so that's interesting to look at. So now look at his global job and community responsibility. Uh, both of these have very similar kind of energies and focuses um, because they're both a mix of warrior and scholar. Um, organization is in the warrior block and the scholar row. Um, so it's a mix of production and learning, but it's about you know taking action to organize the global job organization is about organizing things, all the information or data or actual physical things, whatever it is that needs to be organized. Uh, people with this global job are the ones that do that. Uh, th they give they give uh, structure and ease of use to things that already exist, um, so that they're usable um, and understandable, accessible, things like that. So or organization is a big theme for him, and it could be applied to how he deals with his teachings. Um, and then his uh, community responsibility is review, which is about after working through data, working on certain things, you basically go back and review things to uh, find out what needs to be added upon or fixed or improved um, or expanded upon. So you can see both organization review have a lot of scholar kind of themes going on. Lots of studying, uh, following, you know, reviewing information, organizing information, stuff like that. And that really fits with the scholar essence too. So he's he's got even more scholar going on, but he also has a little bit of warrior going on here too, with both of them having warrior as part of the the themes in the global job and community responsibility. So that's everything in his essence. So now I'll talk about his overleaves. He's in the old soul age level five. If we look at timeline, um, oh, he's an old soul, this last one here, level five. So there's two more levels after that. Old, old soul level five is where he's expressing the old soul age uh, very confidently and experimenting with it a lot. But basically what the old soul age is about, it's about uh, developing context and understanding with how everything fits together. It's a very philosophical uh, view to have, but it, it lets other people just do what they want to do. They're very laid back. They're kind of winding down from their whole reincarnation cycle. So they're getting more detached. Um, <clears throat> so, but they also focus on developing something uh, that they can teach based on all their experience they've had in their whole cycle. So teaching is a is a an aspect of this in the old soul age. You have to basically before you cycle off, you have to teach at least one person what you've learned um, before you can actually cycle off because you have to. This just seems to be how it works in the process. You have to be somebody who's teaching what you've learned before you cycle off. So that's interesting. So let's look at the rest of his chart here. So you have the essence stuff we covered already. That was all parts of his essence that stayed the same for his whole reincarnation cycle. And overleaves are just characteristics for this life. So he's got, he had the goal of growth, um, which is really, self-karmic, it's really focused on having a lot of experiences um, that you can grow from. Lots of, like, whatever can maximize the most amount of like, growth for you personally is what this life would be about. It's the most common goal. Um, a lot of people are in growth. But it's on the inspiration axis. Um, the cardinal inspiration axis. 
So it has like that priest qualities a little bit. And his attitude is spiritualist, um, which is having a more uh, open outlook of things, seeing that there's so many possibilities of what can happen and be being very positive and supporting people and their vision of things. And, and um, you know, it's a very spiritual, open-minded kind of attitude to have. Um, focus on more of the spiritual things and the possibilities in the world. So that's his attitude. That's also on the inspiration axis aligns with the priest. So both his growth and spiritualist goal and attitude really uh, highlight more of the priest characteristics he's got in his essence. Um, he's got caution mode. So he's very cautious. He was very cautious with how he went about things. Uh, making, you know, cautious decisions, going step by step and making sure not to make any mistakes. But he's also sliding to power. So that sometimes his, his expression will be really strong. He'll be in caution most of the time, but that sometimes he'll go like, okay, I'm, I'm being an authority here. I'm speaking. I'm expressing myself. I have something to say. Uh, and, you know, he speaks with authority. That's kind of what the power mode is about. So his centering is emotional and intellectual. So he mainly filters everything in his experience through his emotions. And then whatever he feels emotionally will inform what he thinks about intellectually. So that's kind of the two main uh, centers that he's engaged in, uh, the emotional and the intellectual. He has one obstacle and his stubbornness, which is a fear of change. So if there's a lot of chaos, you know, usually people who have stubbornness, they might have grown up in chaos. So it wasn't as easy to, to, to accept things that change. He wanted to stay kind of the same. Um, I'm not sure to what extent the stubbornness was actually a effect for him because uh, he was a very spiritually involved person. Um, but everybody has some kind of obstacle that they take on uh, to to work on, to kind of improve, you know, give us a challenge um, in this life. Otherwise, things would be too easy. So I'll talk about his body types now. He's got Mercurial and Saturnian. Mercurial is on the expression axis. It aligns with the Sage. And... It's all about communication. Um, you know, it's like the planet Mercury, and Mercury is all about communication. Um, so that's going to be one of the main themes for him is communicating. And then the Saturnian is more of a, a leadership kind of focus. Um, you can think of like Obama or Abraham Lincoln. Um, they've got Saturnian as well. Um, but it's the past, the active positive masculine type. Uh, they're very calm, very disciplined, um, but they work hard and uh, they're usually in leadership positions of some kind. Um, his quadrant is power. So when he's in a group setting, he's the one that takes control and kind of leads the situation. That's what power means. And then his needs are freedom, communion, and expansion. Freedom is, you know, whatever makes him feel like he has freedom to do what he wants. Communion is having some kind of community that he's connected to, a group of friends, or something larger. And expansion is to grow in several areas. It could be uh, through studies or um, whatever area that you want to focus on to, to grow and expand in. Uh, it could be spiritual things. It could be... Uh, more grounded things, but it applies to everything. So yeah, that's everything in this chart. Um, what we can see overall is, you know, he's a scholar and he's got some of the scholar stuff in his global job community responsibility. Um, so that's really big for studying things and uh, providing knowledge for the world. Um, but he has this priest uh, cadence position along with love orientation also love orientation and the global job community responsibility. Um, he also has the goal of growth and spiritualist attitude as well as Saturnian body type. Um, and he's on the emotional centering. So he's got all this inspiration access stuff, which really fits for the spiritual kind of focus that he had. 
Um, so that's really big. Um, the emotions were also a part of that with the love orientation and the centering emotional. Um, and then he had a little bit of expression stuff. The soul age, old soul age is kind of, it's, you could say it's on the expression axis. It has some of those kinds of themes. Um, but the mercurial body type is expression. Caution and power mode are expression axis modes. So he's got some expression too. Not a lot of action axis stuff, but he's got a, a mix of, you know, uh, neutral axis, inspiration, and some expression. Um, but I would say one of the biggest themes is just the spiritual stuff coming through and the scholarly stuff, um, studying and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's what I see for his Michael teachings chart. Um, I'm going to do his Vedic astrology this week as well as his human design gene keys. So stay tuned for that if you want to see more stuff about Ramana Maharshi. And then next week, I, I'm planning to do ra uh through Michael Teachings, Vedic Astrology, and Human Design, who is the founder of uh, Human Design. So stay tuned for that. Uh, the Michael Teachings chart uh, hasn't been seen by anybody but the channel that I got it from, which is, which is Shepard Hoodwin. And, and me, basically. So it'll be cool to reveal that so people can see uh, his type and stuff, uh, what his Michael chart was saying. And I don't think people know about his Vedic astrology either because a lot of people are following Western. Um, but yeah, so the same thing is going to happen with Ramana Maharshi this week. I'll do his Vedic astrology and his human design. Um, and... Uh, that's about it. Uh, I might have some other miscellaneous videos this week too. If I have the chance to talk about something else, but that's the plan for this week. So if you guys like this, please like, and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Manic scholar out.